Welcome to Gotta Run. This is Will Sanchez. My special guest today is Maria Solis Belizaire. Maria is the founder of Latinos Run. I met her at Facebook. I'm thrilled to have Maria as a guest. Thank you for having me. You said my name right, so I'm excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's introduce you to our audience. Tell okay. us where you were born and a little bit about your growing up years. I was born in Bronx, New York, but at the age of two, my parents decided to move my siblings and I to Florida. So I grew up in South Florida, in Fort Lauderdale, basically. I was actively involved in sports growing up and drama and everything, dance in school, and you know, went to college in Florida as well, and finally decided after college, after traveling, studying in Germany and studying in uh, Spain, to move to New York City. And so wow. I've been here for, I think, nine years or seven years. So in Florida, I, I just, uh a lot of swimming there because everybody yes. from Florida seems to know how to swim. Yes, yes. It's funny as you say that because I have friends who ran the triathlon, the New York City one, a couple of weeks ago. And a lot of them were talking about how they had to train, obviously, for swimming. And I, you know, they always say they've never really swam before. And as a Floridian, we all know how to swim. So when you come to New York and people, you know, they say, I don't know how to swim. It's like, really? Well, Manhattan is an island, but uh, we're, we're not, not swimming. swimming in that, you're not swimming in that water, the Hudson. No. Ah, I believe you have a, an older sister, right? I have one older sister and um, a younger brother, and an, I'm also a twin. So You're also a twin. I am a twin. My yes, God. yes. So who's the fastest one in the family then? I don't know. She just joined the Air Force Reserves, my twin Kika, and so she's trained a lot. She just actually finished her boot camp and just returned home about a week ago. So. She's probably faster than me now. <laughs> I, I don't think she was before. We were almost neck and neck, but I'm pretty sure now she's a little bit faster well, than me. I guess we're going to have a family race to uh, settle Absolutely, it. absolutely. We've had plenty of them. I think it's time for another one. So. Oh, okay. Well, you said you went to college in Florida. What yes. did you study? I studied fashion design. I, I initially started going to school for broadcasting, television broadcasting. So I thought I was going to be, you know, I used to say the black Connie Chung. This is what I used to say. And just going through school, I fell into um, fashion, and I ended up getting a scholarship to study overseas. And I just, you know, started working in fashion. Wow, with so, scholarship overseas. Now, where yeah. did you go? I studied in Spain first, in Sevilla, Spain. So I studied there for summertime, and then I got also a scholarship for Germany. So I studied in a school in Trier, Germany. So do you speak a little German then? Uh, Espresha kein Deutsch. I, I probably said that wrong. I speak no German. <laughs> My classes were in German, but when you go to fashion school, you just... You just, you know, see everything and you just learn by, you know, hands on. Yeah, by looking. Oh, yeah. fashion school. So to, is there like theory of how to dress a person with the colors? You know, what's involved sure. in fashion? Everything from, you know, product development, from how to make the product, how to sew it, how to draw it, you know, how to produce it, everything. So, but the school that we went to is an international school, so there were people from all over the world, basically, who were studying with us. So we had a large international group, but I studied just for a semester. So I had to graduate at my school in Florida. You graduated from Florida. Yeah. You needed to decide a career for yourself yeah. or your next step. Yeah. What was the process for that? I actually first came to New York after my associate's degree, and when I came to New York, I, I had uh, applied for the scholarship in Germany, and I ended up getting the scholarship. So the terms were I had to go back for the bachelor's in order to get the scholarship. So that's why I ended up moving back to Florida, finished my, you know, year and a half that I had left, and, you know, graduated, then came back to New York. Oh, good for you for honoring yeah. your commitment. Yeah, well, wow. I mean, you know, when somebody gives you a free scholarship to study in another country, you take it. <laughs> so, oh, excellent. yeah. Excellent. Great opportunity. Yeah, it was. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. Life changing, absolutely. Okay. So, so yeah. you came back to New York to work in the fashion industry? Yes, I did. I ended up working for a fashion studio, and I interned there for a little bit, and then they ended up hiring me full-time. And um, Russell, who was the owner of the company, really took me under his wings, and I worked for them, and then I ended up working for another company. But obviously, I still have that passion to be an entrepreneur mm. and have my own company. So I finally decided, you know, I'm just going to take the risk and do something for myself. So I got out of fashion. I, well, I shouldn't say I got out of fashion because even having my own company where I'm designing my own clothes that I'm selling, it's still the same things I did when I was a buyer years ago or when I worked in fashion for many mm -hmm. years. I'm using the same traits as a buyer, product developer, as I am with my own company. 
own company, meaning a fashion company. I own Latinos Run. So Latinos Run basically is an international company where we're really working with the Hispanic community in the United States and in Latin America to get fit. But we also sell product. People really want to promote who we are as Hispanics together. So I have shirts and different gear, towels, these type okay. of things. And it has the, the logo, the LR. Yes. But this is very recent, like, like a year or two, maybe at most. I've always thought about Hispanics, you know, having a Hispanic running team for many years now. When I first got into running, you know, I was looking for a team when I was in New York City because I used to run by myself. And I used to see all these teams and I said, okay, well, I got to find like the Hispanic team. And there was none. There was no real like Hispanic team. But there were others like black men run, black girls run, front runners. And I said, okay, so I joined Black Girls Run and I ran with them for years. I actually just did an event with them a week and a half ago. Kept saying, I'll do it one day, I'll do it one day. But, you know, life gets in the way, uh, you move around, you know how that is. Fun. Yes, I had to, to one of the founders here, Tony Carey. Yes, yes. He's terrific. Yes. She's based out of Atlanta. Atlanta, yes. And they, I didn't realize until she was here that they, well, I'd, I seen the, uh, the Black Girls Run, they have their own T-shirts. Yes. I guess. I guess yeah. they do a little bit of fashion themselves. Uh, absolutely. Or branding their, yeah. their cause. Yeah. So I've seen their shirts in uh, at Central Park. Yes. And they didn't, but didn't realize they were here for years and years. Yes. Yeah. So, we, so what you were doing, working for the fashion industry, so you were keeping fit by running. I go through phases. Like when I started running, my twin got me into doing fun runs a few years back, and you know those are just for fun. We did the mud runs, the color runs, all that. But when I came to New York, I met an ultra marathoner who, you know, obviously he's a little bit. I'm far more further advanced than I am when it comes to running. But he encouraged me to do New York Roadrunners to join, do the 9 plus 1 program. And, you know, there was nine races left, so I signed up for all nine races. And oh, you signed up late in the year. I did. Actually, it was 10 races left because I had to do the one volunteer on, um, on uh, New Year's Eve. <laughs> that was kind of brutal, standing there on New Year's Eve. But oh, did you New Year's Eve run? Yes. Well, I, I had to do my plus one plus volunteer. Plus one, oh, and that counted. Yes. Okay, yeah, because yes. Uh, I don't know if they still do it because yes. they let you count it for either year. So yes. I guess you said, I needed to count for this year so that you can right. log. So what year was that? The 2013, I think. So you I, did the marathon 2014? 14, I did, That was yes. your first New That York was my City. first, yes. Yeah. Now, usually the first sometimes goes well and sometimes it doesn't. What yeah. was it for you? <laughs> It, it went well. I mean, it's a marathon. I loved it. It's, it's a, an adventure. You know, for me, I find it like an adventure. Um, I do a lot of blogging. So when I was doing the marathon, I stop at every mile. I want to videotape. I want to do pictures. But what happened was I didn't prepare myself because I've never run a marathon. And when I got to mile 18, my phone died on me. So I pretty much was like, that's when it went downhill. I was like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, I always say it's mind over matter. It really is. You know, even though I'm, I didn't truly train properly for the marathon and I didn't run it to like reach a certain goal or anything, I just wanted to complete it. So for me, it's about fun. It's about living the moment, doing something you haven't done before, knocking something off your bucket list. You know, that's what the marathon was for me as it was in 2015. Okay, so, so you did 2014, you enjoyed the experience, you yes. documented most of it. Yes, and 18 miles. <laughs> And in the back of your mind, you were thinking of starting, you haven't started yet officially yeah. Latinos Run, but it was percolating. Absolutely. Like I said, when I first started running, when I met Black Girls Run, it was in the back of my head a Hispanic running organization. And then when I started running with different teams through Nike and, you know, all these other groups, you know, like I said, there was that void for his, the Hispanic community to come together. Mm -hmm. And I felt like somebody needed to fill that void. And I did think about it for a long time. I bought the name online. I said, one day, one day. And it was just sitting there wasting time. And then I finally said, enough. Somebody's got to do something. So... I've always said I wanted to create a movement for our Hispanic community because we obviously have an issue when it comes to health. We have 70 plus, you know, um, a million, oh, sorry, 50, 55, I think, plus million Hispanics living in the United States. 70% are overweight or obese. Oh, my gosh. And then people say, those numbers aren't right. And then they go to Google and they go, I can't believe those numbers are right. And it's when I look at my own family, I say, God, there's not too many of us in our family that are really fit. I'm not fit, like, you know, in the technical standards. I'm not truly fit. 
So, you know, I started really looking at my family, looking at other friends and saying, okay, there's a problem, obviously. Uh -huh, we know uh -huh. there's a problem in our community. So, okay. yeah. Now, by your community, do you live in Manhattan or what, well, what community, area? I live in Manhattan. I live in Harlem. Our team is based out of Harlem. But when I say my community, I'm talking about Hispanics in general. Okay. Yeah, so the Hispanic community, whether it's here in the United States or in Latin America, there's obviously an issue when it comes to the health in our community. Okay, yeah. so you're starting in Harlem, but you said it's really an international yes, absolutely. movement. Absolutely. You, you, you want to invite the entire Hispanic community at large. Uh, we have invited the entire Hispanic community. You know, we, we're online, we're on social media through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, our website, and our runners, our followers, don't just come from the United States. Actually, a majority of them are coming from overseas. They're coming from Panama, they're coming from Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Puerto Rico. So they're actually tagging us in pictures and sharing the runs that they have to invite our uh, American people to their okay, runs overseas. Okay, so you encourage, if you can't run with us in Harlem, run wherever you are to virtual Absolutely. run. Or, Absolutely. Oh, cool. run, there's a team called Lola, Lola's Run in Puerto Rico. And we have runners here in New York that will be doing that run in Puerto Rico, and they tag me in a lot of stuff. I share their, their information. So, you know, it's like working together with the other running community, okay. the other Hispanic running okay. community. Supporting each other. Absolutely. You know, and, and the common denominator Absolutely. Is, is Hispanic. Getting. Although it, anybody could really join. Absolutely. Because you know? people who come to our running group, the, the, the crazy thing is that a lot of people go, do I have to go if I'm not Hispanic? You can come. Like, we invite everybody. And our runners are not just Hispanic. They're, you know, white, black. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And because when you look at Hispanic people in general, we're mixed. That's right. That's so, right. I mean, I'm black Hispanic, you know. And I'm so. Hispanic and I'm very white. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you don't have to be Hispanic to run with us. Mm -hmm. We just want you to come out and run. It's called Latinos Run. And, yes. you know, you're encouraged like you said, Latinos because they might be overweight and yes. there's a community that understands and probably understands their culture and their food because Absolutely. food is very important in Absolutely. Latinos, <laughs> in fact yeah. in every culture. Yeah. Now, how does food play a role in your in your community? The good thing is that we, you know, we do have people that work with us that do talk about health and healthy diets. And when it comes to our community, we know that there's a problem when it comes to food. I mean, I could just take a trip to my grandmother's house in Puerto Rico, and five pounds later, you know, I'm like. So, I mean, a lot we of know, starch. <laughs> yeah, a lot of starch. You know, we're eating obviously the wrong foods. Even though our food is delicious, we love it. You know, it's high in fat, high in salt, high in sugar. There's obviously, when it comes to health in, in our community, food plays a major factor in it. We're really trying to target people and let them know that, you know, you really, if you really want to take care of yourself, you have to understand what you're eating, how it plays a role in your health. Yeah, so. yeah, especially if you're running, you know, if you want to go beyond that one mile Absolutely. and feel good, you need to change your diet. Absolutely. And it's, and it's a process. Absolutely. And it's a learning process because you, you, you really don't know. But yeah. Then, but certainly eating lots of good vegetables, right. learning uh, where to get I guess organic and, food yeah. is good, but it's expensive. It so, is. So do you help in the community of where to find good sources of well, food? Well, you know what? Like our coach just posted something today online about what foods are better for you to eat. Obviously, you can go to Whole Foods, Trader Joe's. You can go to any supermarket and find organic foods. And obviously, organic foods are more expensive. Yeah. You know, if you're paying $7 at McDonald's for a salad, but you can pay a dollar for a burger, people will go for the burger because it's cheaper. Yeah. But you really have to think about what's more important, my health or, you know, yeah. saving the extra bucks. Yeah. Another possibility, learning how to do it yourself, where to find yeah. fresh ingredients. Absolutely. And, uh, and cook at home. Yeah. And sometimes you need uh, cooking lessons. Yeah. Or it's not even that I think how to tell, how to train yourself not to eat junk. <laughs> Um, when I when I really started working out a few years ago, I had gone through a phase. I had lost like 20 pounds, but I was so strict with my diet, and I started really reading up on sugars and you know salts and carbs. So I I trained myself more to take carbs when I was about to run or work out, as opposed to eating carbs at 11 o'clock at night mm -hmm. or eating that candy bar. And you know I had a bad habit of skipping 12 hours a day without a meal. I just I'm one of those people. I just don't think about it. Forget and to eat. I forget to eat. But, you know, the reality is when you forget to eat, what ends up happening, we end up gaining more weight by not eating properly, yeah, you know, yeah. by skipping meals and stuff. So, Okay, okay yeah. but this is an interesting movement that you're starting. Thank you. There are other movements in Harlem. You probably know Harlem Run. Yep. 
They're a great yeah. group. Amazing, amazing. I'm, yep. I'm sure they would love to uh, partner with you. And uh, We get lots of their runners, and our runners go to them. It's great that everybody can help each other, run with the, with the other groups, whether you're in the same community or you're in, in another country. Yep, you yep, know, yep, so. Yep, good. Yep. You said you recently did something with Black Girls. Was that I your kickoff did. event? You had a kickoff. No. So our kickoff event was in New York with our running team, but we actually did a unity run um, because we wanted to just bring more attention to women of color, of all colors. I and say of color, of all colors, mm -hmm. to run together to get fit. And Black Girls Run is a women's only group. So we did a women's unity run and we had everybody, Asian, black, white, uh -huh, Hispanic. Uh -huh. And we had a good turnout. We had a lot of women come out, a lot of sponsors in DC. So we did the run all through the monuments. And oh, okay, so it was in Washington. It was in Washington, DC. The yeah. unity run, love that yes, name. Yes, it oh. was really good. We were, you know, it's about bridging the gap oh, between okay. women and fitness. Oh, okay. So you so that's probably what we do other events, you know, yes. uh, and it doesn't have to be in the New York metro area. It could be Anywhere. wherever you need it. Wherever. So, I mean, like I said, we, you know, we really work closely with other teams, you know, across the country or internationally. And like Lola is having, Lola's run, is Lola's challenge, I should say, is having a run, I think, September 15th. So, in Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico. And I think they end their run. The finish line is at El Morro, which is the castle, whatever. Uh -huh. So the fort, I should say, in Puerto Rico. Okay. So, yeah. So that's something you might be going? Or you, I hope so. You're working on it. <laughs> I have to speak it into existence, so I hope so. hope so. Oh, okay. Yeah. You said you have a coach. Who's that? We actually partner with another team as well, which is Strides NYC. And our coach is Sergio Soto. And amazing, amazing coach. He's really just been such a force behind Latinos Run, everything that we're doing, working with everybody, the pacers to the runners to the walkers. So we work very closely with him. Okay, so he sets the programs. He does. The, the schedule. Absolutely. So so if, if somebody's training for a marathon, talk to Sergio. Yep. He'll put it together a plan for yep. you. So Sergio, basically, he's, you know, he trains for New Balance. He's an elite trainer, elite coach. So he helps coaches, you know, beginners, elite runners. And he, you know, creates a, schedule, a program for them if you're running a marathon or just running just to lose weight. So he develops programs for okay. these people. So he, he's a coach for New Balance? He worked for New Balance, you mean? He does work for New Balance, and he works for New York Road Runners. So he's a coach for both. And he's coaches Latinos Run home team. So. <laughs> Yeah, right. amazing, amazing individual. Right. So that's a good guy to have. So Absolutely. he has good connections. Yes. So if you need uh, New Balance to uh do a clinic for you, you know, you can go to their yeah, store. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, he's working on some stuff with us right now at New Balance. So we're, just, we're hoping that it works out. So, yeah. Well, it's a worthy cause, you know, yeah. to, to get uh, any community to start uh, moving Ab because it's so, so, so healthy. Yes, it is. Okay. So you do this full time? I mean, how do you pay the rent? Well, we sell gear. We do. Vir we have a virtual run coming for Hispanic Heritage Month. So from September 15th to October 15th, anybody can go online and they could purchase a package. And it will include um, a bib. It will include a T-shirt and a medal after. So, And we're really hoping to get people internationally also to do the virtual run so we can kind of create that movement oh, okay. together. We say virtual run, there's a fee to pay for it? They do. They do pay the fee. So they'll go online and they'll pay the fee. So they'll get the bib, they'll get the t-shirt, and they'll get the medal. Okay. And we're really trying to focus on teams that are already established. Individuals can obviously run it, but we would like to have teams start doing their runs together, the virtual run, and just really create something for Hispanic Heritage oh, Month. Okay. Virtual run, you know, anybody can run it in their home, at their gym. They could run oh, it with their those, team. Between that time period. Uh, yes. So because it's a month-long um, holiday for Hispanics, you know, they could run it anytime they want to. Oh. So it doesn't have to be Hispanic. We have some of the girls from Black Girls Run will be doing the virtual run. Good, so, good, good, good. yeah. Good. And I recommend you get the uh, local officials involved, like Senator Bill Perkins. Oh. He's a big runner, and he's right in Harlem. All right. And he would love to be part of it. I think that would be really good. Oh, yes. So we're actually working with Harlem HIT and uh, Physical Therapy of Harlem. So we're trying to have a 100-meter dash, which is October, I think, first or second, the first first weekend of October. So we're, ju we're trying to have that in um, Marcus Garvey Park. A 100-meter so, dash? 100-meter dash, okay. yeah. Okay, so it's going to be prizes or kids um, and Hopefully families. we'll have some good prizes. We can't give it away just yet, but there'll be prizes. Oh, there cool. will be prizes, yeah. yeah that's something you can work with Harlem Run because they do yeah. the one 
one mile run. Yes. Uh, uh, Marcus Garvey as well. Yes. So, well, ours is a 100 meter I dash, know, but, but, but we'll definitely have running teams from, doesn't matter if you're Harlem run, black girls run, black men run, front runners, all of them. Okay. So, we would love for them to come out. Yeah. Oh, excellent. excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do we, eventually, what's your goal? I mean, do you want to grow? Yes. Do you want to? have a marathon team of Latinos run? You know. Oh, definitely. I mean, I think there'll be a bunch of us running in the marathon already this year. So, and you know, there's marathons all over the world, but we just really want to help change our community. That's the most important thing. Most of the older generation that, you know, are Hispanic aren't, ne aren't necessarily runners. You know, they have a family to take care of. They have to cook and work multiple jobs and there's also that disconnect when it comes to that language barrier so you know when it comes to the younger um, people younger Hispanics that are coming to this country they're more uh, interested in running joining running yeah, teams yeah, and yeah. stuff like that so we're really trying to focus on those Millennials who really want to get fit want to uh -huh, get healthy uh -huh. you know join the running teams yeah, so. Yeah, so that's a great goal Another organization to hook up is, of course, New York Road Runners. Yeah. They're very supportive of running. Yep. They're in the Harlem community. They yes. do the Percy Sutton yes. 5K. You'll done that. probably yes. be participating. Yeah, I think I've that's coming that. up soon. I think it? so, too. I did one a few years back. I haven't done it in a while, so I definitely yeah. should do it yes. again. Yeah. They're a wonderful organization. Yeah. Work with your community board. Yes. In fact, go introduce yourself to the community board. I know. They we love have, to, to we, hear, yeah. hear about you guys. So we work, well, I know a lot of people on the community board, and we work closely with some of them. So we have one of the youngest um, uh, members of the community board, Victoria Pinell is her name, and um, she has a, an organization called Tools for Change. So we work with her to help bring younger people to Latinos Run. So we definitely work with the community board, and hopefully I can get some of those community board members to come out and run with us. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now we say younger members. Do you have children's program? Our coach, Sergio, does does train a summer program for um, New York Roadrunners. So we're really trying to get some kids to come out. You don't have to be 30 years old or 25 or 50 or whatever. You come with your parents. Come run with us. You know, because at the end of the day, I think a lot of the older generation, you know, they have their kids. So if you want to do something with your kids and not get stuck at home, you know, bring, bring the them along. Bring them along. Absolutely. Oh, cool. Very and cool. yeah, and Sergio's great at training the younger um, generation. He's really good at that. He's He's been doing it for years. Okay. So. So when do you guys meet? We meet on Tuesday nights, 7 o'clock. We actually have a bag check at Little Bamboo Sushi. And it's on 119th and Lenox Avenue. And then Sergio, he also trains about six days a week. So anybody can go online, um, latinosrun.com, or they can see um, Strides NYC and see what other days. And we run with them on the other days. But we do a lot of pop-up stuff. So we're going to have a lot of yogas and uh, boot camps with running. So we have a lot of stuff coming up with other organizations in the community. So anybody can go online, look at our schedule at um, latinosrun.com. It's getting started, but you know, it yeah. sounds like you've got a, already oh, so a rich much. program. This we is absolutely just scratching do. the surface. We absolutely do. And we just launched a few weeks ago. We just launched. We have so much to do. But it's like, why, why wait? What do, what do we have to wait for? Do we have people already ready to really get involved and make a difference for themselves? I just needed that one person to kickstart it, and that was you. Well, hey. I don't know if it's me or it's me meeting Sergio that really helped kickstart it. Because uh, at the end of the day, having that support team behind you, and I have, we have about eight pacers who run with us, and just having that team of people who just support each other is what really drives the organization and the movement, because they believe in what we're doing. Okay. And, but you're yeah. the leader. Usually there's yeah. one person yeah. will follow you to the end of the cliff, even if you have to Absolutely. jump. That's Absolutely. That's great. You need that kind of passion. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not a trainer. You know, I just, I'm just somebody who wants to, to really make a difference in my community. You know, um, I lost my mother. My mother died when I was uh, 29 years old. So she was 43 of cancer. Oh, so, sorry and to hear that. yeah, thank you. And um, she was um, overweight, many years overweight. And there's a lot of times I look back and say, you know, had she had that opportunity to really get fit, be healthy, maybe she could have lived a bit longer. Yeah. So I think just, you know, just because what happened to her, that was more of a drive for me to really try to make a difference in my community. And Oh, and also myself get more in shape. Sergio's not, he's good. He's hard, though. you coming out, you know. He trains anybody beginners to elite. But if you really want a good workout, trust me, we have the perfect coach. So he's really, really amazing. That's true. Running uh, sometimes involved a little core training, a little yep. weightlifting, a little stretching, a little he bit does of everything. It all. He does as it all. As well as the, 
to food choices. Yep. It's, uh, it's a process. It's a process, but you know what? I think it's a rewarding process at the end of the day. And if you know that your health is better because you're, you're working out, you're living a healthier lifestyle, you can't get any better reward than that. And as Senator Bill Perkins says, your wealth is your health. Absolutely, absolutely. So I have to reach out to Senator Bill Perkins. If you're looking at this, Senator, please I'll come run sure with us. To listen on that positive note. Thank you thank so you. much for dropping in. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.